All right, and um, I guess here in the studio, we're just about to wind up. But just before we do, let me give you closing comments um, on uh, the political situation in the country. Of course, many said, uh, what would influence uh, politics uh, we know within this period and uh, 2022 uh, would be issues of uh, you know, gender equity, as we've just spoken about, but also 2022 succession politics, um, which is likely to come into play. Uh, but many questions have been asked as to what, what key factors are likely to shape the next five years, especially after this planned swearing in. Uh, by the opposition. Professor Ajakoya, let me give you uh, a closing comment on this. What is likely to shape uh, you know, the political arena in the next five years in relation to this plan swearing in? Let me put it very clearly as I've done before, and I don't know which words will actually be fine. The president, it will depend on the president's cabinet. My view is in that particular cabinet, it should have members from both sides of the divide. Uh -huh. It should actually talk to Raila, you should talk to Gideon Moy. You should also talk to women leaders, particularly the likes of Waiguru, the likes of uh, Laboso, and the likes of uh, um, Ngilu. Uh -huh. Let's not just be talking of men succeeding in 2022. We might get a surprise. We might get a woman this time, right. even though I'm in the race myself. Uh -huh. But you should have Gideon Moy in the cabinet. You should have Raila's people in the cabinet, or Kenyans in the cabinet, and women. Uh -huh. Then you will actually face up the equilibrium. Otherwise, tribalism will never end. Because now I hear Ruto being told that he has to have somebody from central province. Is it going to be a country for exchange? That if it's not Rift Valley, Kalenjins, it's Kikuyus in central province? Uh -huh. Hell no. Uh -huh. Let us depart from that uh, attitude of saying, pay us back. We shall pay you. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, the next president of Kenya is not known. Those who are speculating right now, they may not be there that, that next time. But the president should actually appoint men of honor, men who can bring stability. Because after all this, Rift Valley is in the offing. You can see what's happening in the Rift Valley. Uh -huh. To minimize Ruto, put Gideon Moy. Uh -huh. um, and and do we, of course, when it comes to you and you know, asking what you would expect, then you, you would uh, advocate for the economic model. But politically, what are you expecting from um, top leaders, President Uru Kenyatta, and leaders within the uh, national uh, you know, super alliance in terms of this plan swearing in, and what that means for the 45 million Kenyans in the country? My opinion is um, that the swearing in doesn't take place, and instead, the two parties in the political divide agree on what has been referred to on many occasions as inclusivity, uh -huh. because that is the way to go. Any other thing will be chaotic. Uh -huh. All right, and it's a great uh, you know, point to end it there, Dr. Musumba. What then is this inclusivity? Is it having more members of the opposition, uh, you know, more members who lost in the election, be part of the executive, uh, you know, as we've heard from political leaders? What kind of inclusivity do we need to champion? Uh, for me, just to respond to your question earlier, what I see to be the game changer between now and 2022 is that we are going to have a very different citizen. The Kenyan citizen of uh, 10 years ago is not the one that we have today. Today, people have access to information. People are able to read and they're able to you know, engage, organize themselves uh, much more better than they could before. So going towards 2022, I see devolution also playing a very critical role in being centers around which people can be able to organize themselves whether politically, whether economically, or in different ways. So the stronger our county governments grow and become, I think they're going to become forces to reckon with, uh, with regard to the whole question of what happens in 2022. Remember that we have 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds who are going through the school process. They will be the voters of 2022 right. for the first time. And they are different people from, from, at least from my generation, they're completely different. So if you, if you try to bank on the sort of politics that we've been doing in the last few years, and you think that you will use this in 2022 uh -huh. to be able to, to garner votes, you may be mistaken because their interests may be completely different. Uh, the way they view things will be different. Many of them will have grown up not knowing the significance of the current political players that have been on the landscape for the longest time, so they'll be completely different people. So towards inclusiv inclusivity, Remember that the same question applies also in the, at the county levels. We still have counties where there are certain ethnic communities or certain uh, demographics that feel excluded even within the county mm -hmm. at the county level. So county assemblies also and county governments must do 
the best that they can to ensure that within their, 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 their parameters, or within their boundaries, that people feel included at that level. Because, uh, of course, there has been a de-escalation of, uh, you know, kind of like the tension there would have been if we only had national government. Today we have people fighting at the county levels for political space, and then there are those who fight at the national space. Mm -hmm. So the county governments, to me, are, are spaces where that, that provide us, you know, with the scope where people can concentrate at that level, and then as others also at the national level. So at both levels, both national and county, there has to be the drive towards, in, you know, including people, um, you know, in those spaces. All right, all right. Yeah. That's a, you know, a rather good, uh, you know, uh, model if you think about it, uh, Dr. Kabao. As we wind up very briefly, what are your expectations in the next seven days um, until the 30th of January for the planned swearing in? I expect and hope that there will be no swearing in, that it will not be necessary, uh -huh. that both sides, Jubilee and NASA, uh, will move towards the center, that we have dialogue. And I would uh, certainly, again, want more inclusion, uh -huh. uh, inclusivity, whether it is at the national uh, government, whether it is at the county governments. And, uh, my fellow panelists have emphasized that, and it is important for the, this country on the long term. Uh -huh. All right, many things. So inclusivity seems to be um, key across board in what uh, needs to be done in the country. That is our discussion on the political point this morning. I've been speaking to Dr. Tom Cabal, who is an advocate and a governance expert. And next to him is uh, Dr. Linda Musumba, who is an advocate. We also have uh, Kiyoko Ndubi, who is a governance expert. And last uh, but not least, uh, Professor George Wajakoya, who is an advocate. Many thanks for joining us, lady and uh, gentlemen, on our discussion, bringing us to a short break here on Morning Express. Do stay with us. Remember, it is Tuesday when you come back. We take a look at your money and the key rules in 2018 to ensure you have more money in your pocket. Stay with us.